You know, it's interesting. Guys are either too nice or they're neglectful. In other words, their level of dominance is in this huge spread of where they're at. And so for most guys, most guys watch this video, they're in the spectrum of being too nice. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the seven strategies that you can do to stop being too nice and be way more fucking confident. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. When a man is being manipulated, the first thing he asked me is like, Ed, how do I set boundaries? And I'm like, okay, well, what do you want? Because I can tell you certain boundaries and you'll say, I'm gonna hold these boundaries, but it's not gonna really stay true to him. Like it's not gonna resonate within him. And so then how is he gonna enforce this? Because if he tries to enforce this without any kind of certainty or conviction, she's just gonna steamroll over him. And so a boundary has to come from one thing, intolerance. What do you hate? Pretty much it. What can you not stand? And then get really, really intolerant of that shit to the point where you're like, I'm not putting up with it anymore. And this is where a boundary comes from. Now, a boundary isn't a preference. A boundary is, hey, can you not flirt with my best friend in front of me? Right? That's a boundary. A boundary is something like you cross it, then you're talking about, is this relationship even going to work? And see, nice guys are very tolerant of everything. They're trying to be nice and affable and take everybody, make everybody like them and all that stuff. And you don't need to do that. If you want to start being more confident, then you have to start being more intolerant of the things that you don't want in your life and then enforcing that. Which when you start doing this, you're going to start wanting to do one thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. You don't have to justify why you want these things any more than you have to justify your shoe size or your favorite type of ice cream. So when you stop apologizing, what you're really telling to yourself is, what I like matters. I matter. Whereas the person who's too nice says, I don't matter. Everybody else matters. I need to make everybody else happy so that everybody will like me. So if you stop going out there and trying to be nice to everybody and you start standing up for what you want and you stop apologizing for you just being you, then you're telling yourself subconsciously that you matter. And at some point, your level of matterness will raise up to at least the level that other people matter. And hopefully, we'll get it even higher. But at this point, you're going to start feeling some power. You're, you're going to have that inflection point of where, oh, shit, I'm starting to really, really care and love myself. Nice guys are typically quiet. Now, they're not always quiet. Some are very extroverted. But generally, they don't speak up for what they truly want. What they want doesn't matter. And so part of this, of getting past this whole being too nice and being more confident, more dominant in your life, you have to speak up for what you want. And you have to own that shit. Like, own what you want. And so if you like Dungeons and Dragons or something, own it. It's like, yeah, I like it, and I'm proud to like it. If you sit there like, yeah, I like it, I'm embarrassed to talk about it, then yeah, then you're, you're gonna do, everybody else is going to see you that way. You're like, yeah, you're a loser. And so you have to speak up for what you want and express it unapologetically. Now, we're not going to come over and be a hard ass and steamroll over people. You want to mitigate it with the foundation of heart and humility. But at the same time, own it. Like, yeah, this is what I like. And this is why I like it. And it doesn't matter what your opinion is because I like it and I am my own best friend. The nice guy or the guy who's too nice is not really nice at all. What he is is manipulative. What he's trying to do is he's trying to manipulate approval from other people by pretending to be somebody that he's not. By trying to pretend that he is what this person wants. He's a chameleon. So he's not himself. He's a lying manipulator. And on the surface, he says he's nice, but he's really not because he's trying to be what this other person wants, which means he's a liar. He's putting on a mask. Nobody really gets to see the real version of him, which makes him creepy. And so this whole game is predicated on this whole idea of I need the approval of others to feel like I'm worthy of anything. And it's backwards. And so you have to get into this place where you're not seeking approval from others. You give yourself approval. And from this place of giving yourself approval, you owning your own value, then other people reflect back to you what you think about yourself. And this happens all the time. If you get a guy who goes and walks up to a woman and asks her out and he has a low value for himself, she's going to reflect that back to him and say, yeah, I don't want to date you. You're demonstrating to me that you're low value because you don't care about yourself. So I'm going to tell you that that's what you are because that's what you want. I'm going to give you what you want. And he's like, I don't want her to tell me or reject me. He's like, well, then why are you doing that to yourself? That is what you want. And you know this. You know that if you beat yourself down and you walk up to this woman with your head down and you apologetically ask her out and she's like, I don't want to be with you. You're telling her, please treat me this way. And then she does and you get upset at her for doing what you asked her to do. And so you have to approve of yourself. You approve of yourself, then she'll reflect it back to you and then she'll approve of you as well. So how do you start approving of yourself? Start doing hard things. Do things that put you out of your comfort zone. Why? Because when you accomplish the hard things, you start being proud of what you can do. 
And then from this place where you start proud of what you can do, you're like, oh, I must be the character. I must be the kind of guy that can do that thing. And I'm proud of that. I'm that kind of guy that can do these things. I am awesome. And so then you're not getting approval from other people. You're getting self-approved. You become self-interested. You're not becoming selfish, but you're becoming self-interested. Like in other words, I start to matter. And then this place of I mattering, everything starts to change. Again, when you get past that inflection point where you start to feel like you matter more than other people, and I'm not saying that you're intrinsically more valuable than somebody else, but your well-being matters to you more than the well-being of other people around you. In other words, if I am in a family, and I do have a family, and I think that my children matter more than me and my wife matters more than me, what ends up happening is I drain myself and give everything away to them. What's left is an empty shell of a man who has no time or energy for anything. I don't have time for my business, I don't have time for my kids, I don't have time for my wife because I'm already tapped out. And then they get the angry, upset, grumpy version of me. Or I take an hour or two, recharge, and they get the best version of me the whole time they see me. Let's like, say they have 10 hours of me, I'm grumpy all the time, or they have four hours where I'm fucking awesome. And you can imagine which one is better for my children. So going in the same vein is you have to like yourself. Somebody who goes for the approval of other people, even over, he wants them to like him more than he likes himself is a sellout. And so you must be able to respect yourself more than anything. And this is a big problem for guys who get cheated on. They don't have self-respect. They're like, this woman can cheat on me, be with this guy, do all this stuff, and I'm still gonna try to bring her back. I'm still gonna try to convince her to love me because why well, I'm a nice guy who's approval seeking. And I hinge my entire value on her approval of me. Will she have sex with me? Will she come back to me? Will she show me that I'm a good man? And he's got it reversed. If he had flipped it around the other way, he's like, I am a good man regardless of what you do, then she probably wouldn't have cheated on him to begin with. He doesn't have respect for himself. You're always with yourself, so why wouldn't you respect yourself? Why wouldn't you love yourself? You're the only person you got. And probably the biggest determining factor for a guy who likes himself is he's able to do one thing more than anything else. And this one predicates all the things in here. Can he do the thing he's afraid of? Can he step through fear and do the thing? Feel the fear and do it anyway. Courage isn't not having fear. Courage is feeling the fear massively, yet doing the fucking thing. And so your ability to have everything you want in life is your ability to see the fear and step through it regardless. To see the consequences, say, fuck it, I'm going all in. This one thing right here, you do this one thing, you do all the things. Everything in your future is on the other side of this fear. Your ability to have a great marriage, your ability to have a great family, your ability to make money, your ability to have a good relationship with God, your ability to like yourself. If you can't step through the fear, you can't do anything. And so you gotta start small. Start with little things. Start doing things that scare you. The more things you do that scare you, the more you'll be proud of yourself. The more you're proud of yourself, the more you'll lean into doing things over and over again so that you have a level of mastery. And so the guys that win in life are the guys who actually failed more times than you even attempted to try or even thought about, right? The guys that are good with women have gone and approached hundreds or thousands of women. And they've gone and failed more times than you even thought about attempting. And so you have to be able to lean into that fear and go do the thing so that you could fail, so that you can get the mastery and get good. And then from this place of mastery and get good, you're going to start having self-respect. You start loving yourself. You start being like, I fucking did this shit. I can do it. So there you have it. Those are powerful strategies that you can use today to stop being fake nice and actually be a confident guy who is actually open and honest and vulnerable with people. Willing to be exposed. The guy who's not coming off as creepy. Guys worry about being creepy. It's because they're trying to be fake. There's something they want from the woman, but it's not actually her. It's usually approval, validation, or sex. And so for you, if you want to have a good relationship with women and you want to be powerful and confident, then you have to step through the fear. You have to stop being fake nice to get what you want. And if you really want to learn how to conquer insecurities and become really confident, check out this video here. If you have a question that you would like to ask me directly, go ahead and comment below. And if you like this video, hit like. And if this gave you value and you want to see more, hit subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.